On this week's show, how to maximize rents and find good tenants. In the news, we're going to discuss the European city where you can buy a house for 80 pence. That is crazy. And we're going to be answering all your property related questions. Hi, I'm Russell Leeds. Hey, I'm Alistair Cunningham. And welcome to the Property Investors Podcast. Thank you for joining us. We do appreciate it. Um, by the way, I was going to mention it to you because mm-hmm. um, I know it's actually, by the time this goes live, it's a little bit behind the times, but did you watch the Anthony Joshua fight? No. Do you like Anthony Joshua? Mm. You, no. No, well, I don't dislike him, but I'm not I'm not into... Um, uh, yeah, no, I don't. No, I don't dislike him. He's a nice guy. I'm sure he is. Um, but yeah, no. I'll, mm. Do you not like boxing? Not really. No. <gasps> really? Yeah. But you into fighting and stuff? Has am you? I? When have you ever seen me fight? You just talk about it, don't you? Do I? <laughs> yeah. No, I've never fought anyone in my life. Uh, no, I'm not into fighting. No, why? You're not into watching boxing and stuff. No. That really surprises me. No. Ah, oh, well, that kind of. What happened then? I know he won, but he also lost last time, so like won all in it. Well, not really, because yeah. he was champion. He lost his belts. This was the rematch. He's won them all back. Okay, cool. So he's like a four-time, well, he's worth two-time champion now, but four belts he's holding. Oh, amazing! Yeah, good stuff. I know he's a he's a he's a nice he's a great guy. I'm not saying he's not. I do just you, don't do follow he's, boxing. Do you know he's a big fan of us. Yeah, I know he is. Yeah. All right. Anyway. All right. Okay, let's let's do that again. Yeah, Anthony Joshua's amazing. <laughs> Boxing's amazing. Um, I just I I I don't get. A, he's probably gonna watch this. Yeah. Is he? Okay. But he's an amazing guy, but I just don't follow boxing, bro. Um, but I know that he does. I I did read a little bit about the uh, the fight, the previous fight. Um, there was a documentary, not a documentary, but there was a, like a, a thing on YouTube I saw. Because um, obviously I know that there's an involvement, um, and so I, I did look into him a little bit. And they said that the first time he fought this little fat Mexican, um, little, he's six foot two. How tall you? <laughs> Five foot eight. Um, the first time he fought the Mexican, yeah. um, I remember seeing on Facebook all the jokes coming out, like people like big fat guys saying, "Look, so you don't have to be all slim to 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 be world champion." Um, and I remember seeing all that. Um, but and I, I I remember reading that he done lots of training to he didn't want to lose to. He basically just fought a really smart, really well played, yeah. really good fight, and he won. I, I, I'm not into boxing. Uh, I'd I'd love to say I'm into boxing, but I'm I'm just really, really surpri- not. Really surprised really that you're not. into boxing. You need to get into boxing. Why? A new hobby for why? Because it's 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 really entertaining. Is it okay? Yeah. The few boxing matches I've ever seen, I found incredibly boring. Um, you're on the edge of your seat like one one punch and the whole thing could end it's like a football match where there's a golden goal you score that's it yeah. game over no it just it just doesn't it does it does two guys getting around battering and the shit out of each other don't yeah wow that, that, interesting that I did meet at the uh, crash course just um, two days ago we've got our in the academy we've got a professional MMA fighter and do you know what? He shook my hand and his hands are bigger than my hands. And I just patted him. I just went like, yeah, hey, mate, how you doing? And I'm like, fucking hell. <laughs> it's like, he's a big guy. He's, 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 an, he's a really nice guy. And I was just chatting to him about what he does, the MMA, UFC fight and all that sort of stuff. Is it the same thing? Yeah, yeah same thing. Um, and he was telling me about one of the fights he just had and um, like his nose is a bit bent out of shape and his, his knuckles, he broke one of his, his he broke, broke that knuckle. And it's just yeah, like, it's not worth it, is it? It's no, well, he, My no- he loves oh, it. He loves it. Your so. nose is out of shape for life. Uh, no, thank you. I yeah. mean, mind you. Well, I mean, I, I, much I difference to you, would it? Just, uh, I, I, I put up with it. So might um, straighten it. You might straighten it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, ring somebody to twat me in the nose, straighten my nose out. Actually, I'm actually better looking after that fight. <laughs> Oh, your situation has got to be bad if you go in a ring and come out better looking. Um, so, yeah, on that uh, note. All right, what, so what are we going to talk about today? We're talking about how to maximise rents. Oh, amazing. So that's it's quite relative to last week's show. Yeah, well, last week we talked about finding a good HMO manager. This week we talking about maximising rents. So, um, what's the number one way to maximise rents in a property? Well, I would say, for me, there's lots of ways of doing it. So, first of all, is you, you have a nice house. Yeah. Rather than a crap house. You've which, got to remember, your house... Is your product. It's like any business. Your house is your product. So it's like Apple, yeah? They've got Apple, iPhone 11s, all right? The best product on the market. Better than any Samsung, better than any rubbish, cheap old Samsung phone. Is it better, like, than, better, than, better than an iPad Pro? But we're not, that's, that's a different product. That's like saying, is, is my Ferrari better than my push bike? 
they're different products. Well, Ferraris, the well, Ferraris well, of cars. Uh, that pushback the may be is, the best. The thing answer is yes. No, it's different products. Is my Ferrari it? better than my pushback? Yes, it is. But it's a really good pushback. I don't care. The Ferrari is better. My point being is you can't compare like it's not like you were about to out so, argue until you came up with the worst analogy no, I've ever heard no, no, in my no, no, entire no. life. You cannot compare. It's got to be like for like. It's like you can't compare there like this product to that light because they're not like yeah, that but might be the best light very similar that might be the best light in the market for lights this very is the best. they do the same thing this is the best thing in the market for phones like better than that shitty samsung you've got no, like the, the, the thing that goes flat every five minutes because you're always looking for a phone charger it does go flat in five minutes you're I'm always on, looking for a phone charger i'm on like uh, right now it's 10 to 10 to 1 i'm on 33 percent. yeah and it was fully charged this morning though, that yeah. of course yeah uh, let me just check what i'm on Oh, I'm on ten percent. <laughs> <laughs> no, my point being, your house is your product. Yeah, right, right. it's your product. Okay. So, would you go to market with a shitty product? No, you wouldn't. You want to maximize income, maximize your rent. Go to market with a top end product. Well, mind you, Apple did for years. Did they? Yeah, all the oh, same iPhone. Just like, oh, how do we change it? And it's just, I don't know. Let's make it a bit squarer, and then other than that, it's the same. Yeah, new iPhone. What's it got? The features that Samsung had five years ago. They're all new. It's kind of what happens. Oh, it? is it? Like, I don't know. But my point being, go to market with the best product you've got. The best product you've yeah. got. Like, no point looking at him because he's an Apple fan. I know. Like, I was looking at him. He was, even though he's Apple fan, he was like, yeah. It's kind oh of, yeah. It's kind of true. <laughs> Right, okay. Go to market with the best possible product. That's yep. what you want, okay? Nicest, well decorated. Think of it like it's your home. Like, would you live in a filthy home? Would you live in a home that's got an old, fallen apart kitchen? Carpets that have been down there for 10 years that are mucky and grim and flat and worn out. You can actually like do that. a lot of these things very cheaply, can't you? Really cheap, really cheap. So what you, what's near. the best, when you've, when you've, um, because you're more hands-on than me. Yeah. I know you've done your own tiling and you've done yeah. you know, stuff that I... My first couple of refurbs I've done all my... I've done myself. Yeah. So what was the, what's the best things that you do? Because like, things like wall art makes a big difference. Yes. When you do, when you, when you, when you do viewings. And the easiest get, way to uplift a property in the sense of to make furnishing. it feel fresh, fresh furnishing. is paint. Just paint the house. All right. Right? Furnishings? No. Oh. Paint, carpets. And furnishings. Decoration. Decoration is the same as paint. No, it's not. Wall art, pictures, nice it's furnishings. things. No, it's not. It's dressing and furniture. Furnishing and dressing. Dressings and then furniture. Yeah. Um, as I say, furnishings. By the way, I don't mean furniture. I know you I mean, mean furnishings like, as in like like wall art, <coughs> uh, rugs, things, little yeah, touches, yeah. Little, clocks. The female touch, shall we say? The the, the yeah. touch that like the the the, uh, the female will bring. Um, honestly, carpets and paint. Right, you're talking two and a half grand for the house. It will, even if you just put new carpet and new paint in your house, yeah, it will lift it up. It will make it smell fresh. It will make it look fresh. It will just be so much more brighter and airier. Um, the next thing is furnishings. Like, have nice pictures on the wall. Um, you can go to, like, B&M, places like that. You can buy wall art for next to nothing. Like, um, somebody's obviously stole this one. <laughs> like, there's two hooks in the wall, but there's no wall art. Um, somebody's nicked it. Um, we've also nicked it for HMO. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Let's have that away. No, okay. My you point don't being, need to go to B&M. You can you just, just steal it from office. work. Yeah, steal it from work. Right, my point being, look, just little things like that. Try and make it as homely as possible. Now, a big thing, which I think is really important, and if I lived in a HMO, I would hate it if they had this, okay? Have good quality cutlery. You'd hate it if they had this. Have had bad cutlery. If they had bad cutlery, I'd hate We're it. We're talking HMOs now. HMOs. Right. Have really good quality kitchen equipment. Things like your knives, your forks, oh, your, your cutting. Do you know what I'm going to do next your... time you come around my house for dinner? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy the cheapest, like, shittiest do, do you know? Do you know? I, I've, been to, I've seen so many HMOs, um, and I, I went to look to buy one that had just been finished. Okay, Just been finished. It had been furnished, decorated, and everything. They used the cheapest, crappiest furniture they could find. Right, It was all mismatched. So... It, Every room was the same, but all the rooms were different, okay? So the one room would have blue, for like... Not hold on, hold on. All the rooms were the same, but every room was Each different. room had the same stuff in the room, okay? So all rooms had... All the room had... Uh, bedroom room one, one had all white furniture, and it was all the same style. Bedroom two had oak furniture. So th all the rooms have different furnitures in there. Either. Nah, it does, it does. I think, I think you need to have a theme for the whole house. I don't agree. I okay, fine. But I'll tell you what. You're not going to go in their bedroom, are you? No, I know. I'll tell you why, though. Go on. I'll tell you why. Because I, it, as it, it happens, it makes, by the way, I do do them all the same. Right, I, 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 there's a reason for it. Go on. Because 
it makes one supplier. All you need is one supplier. You don't need 10 suppliers. Yeah, but let's say, for and example... Th- what I'm trying to get at is the reason they were all different is not because... <laughs> look at you, you falling asleep. The reason all the rooms were different was not because they were they, they, they thought of, let's have each room a different theme. It's because they were buying the furniture from wherever they could, and they just, oh, there's enough room for that, so that's enough furniture for that room. And the furniture's all wonky, wobbly, and the beds were not great. Yeah, if it's crap furniture, fair yeah. enough. But so you need really good furniture. But do you, you know you say, you, if you buy it all the same, you can buy it all from one supplier. Yeah. You know that... Um, suppliers tend to have different colors yes i know i like to have all my furniture the same Why? right just because it makes the th- it makes the house the same and but, but to the same who? theme to me and it, it's good <laughs> because they and don't see the other people's I rooms care. i don't care i just i think it's a good idea right, like, it's go. easier to manage okay um really important like, why, I, why, I, is that, why is that tenant being such a dick causing problems well it's because <laughs> my wardrobe is brown and, and his Dave's is. wardrobe is white and I'm just well, not happy about it. <laughs> you never know. You, you never know. You know what? I'm not surprised. From, a, from a logistical point of view, it's easier if the house is all the same furniture. Um, now, the, the house I was looking at, it brand new, it's a six bedroom HMO, just been refurbished, it was in Liverpool. Now, they spent all the money getting the carpets done, getting the house refurbished, painted, but they put shit furniture in. Like cheap ass furniture now what's the point because it doesn't cost much more to put good stuff in and then you go in the kitchen and like i was open the kitchen drawer and you look at the cutlery and it's the cheap ass as the smart price f- flimsy fork that when you go like that it bends it's just rubbish put decent stuff in the house and you'll keep good tenants you like to eat a not good knife and fork just yeah I'm did not... you see the apprentice guy they got pictured at mcdonald's but he took his own silver knife and fork with him so he was eating a big mac <laughs> what a in dick my... <laughs> what a dick. Did you see that? Dick? Right, anyway, um, just g- good, high quality stuff. That's what I'm getting at. Um, that's one way to keep tenants. And, and t- t- you want them to move in and treat it like their home and feel mm. at home. So that's one way. Um, that's one way, yeah. Cool. High quality well, well, stuff. So, one, so make it nice. The other thing is to do what we call super rent. Yeah. So if you've got, if you've got a house, mm-hmm. if you want to achieve a good rent, mm-hmm. don't rent it out as a single let. Yeah, yeah. Rent it out as either. HMO service accommodation. Yeah. Um, so this is how, obviously, we're going to talk about how to find good HMO tenants. Um, so another way to do it is, do you know I talk about the, the spare room trick? Do you remember the one I told you? Where you, you then market direct market to the people that have, that have said, look, I'm prepared to pay £600 a month as opposed to the people that are cheapskates. Yeah. And then you, you target them directly. Um, now, we cover this more in, in some of the, tra- the further training I'm going to do, so I'm not going to go into details about it on here. But uh, if you want to know this sort of stuff, how to get maximum rents for your properties, um, yeah, come along to training because, like, all my HMOs are getting way more, like, talking, you're talking 50 to 60 pound a week more per room for the area. They're all, like, in Hull, I'm getting 400 pound, 420 pound per room, where every other property in the street is, like, 350, 360. And mm. there's, there's, I, I, there's ways to do that. Um, and the, I suppose the thing is, is that like a high-end HMO yeah. is still cheaper than an apartment. An apartment, yeah. Because, you know, I suppose if you've got, HMOs only going to have a certain amount, but I suppose mm-hmm. if they're on suite, like for me, the turn-offs for a HMO would be having to share a bathroom. kitchen and a bathroom. Yeah, same as, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Kitchen I could live with, but bathroom no way. But kitchen could you live with because you don't really use your kitchen? I do you know what? Um, yeah, you're right. And and at home in my in my apartment, I, I mean, I, I um I just don't use my kitchen. Um, I I, I eat out so much. Um, just because I I don't cook at home, just don't get around to it. So yeah, as I hate if I was I a actually, more time, I've I, actually was start. I used to eat out all the time. I've yeah. Started last. I'm doing a you now. You probably can't tell. Tell us about. Oh, yeah. He says that to me every time we meet. Can, we not, can you tell I've lost weight? I've lost weight? I've lost weight? I've lost weight? No, I can't tell. You look the same. Um, yeah, f- um, <laughs> yeah, you take. <laughs> I actually <laughs> lost weight in India. Um, it's because I didn't eat anything. <laughs> I lived off naan bread for the week. Um, <laughs> well, I'm not, you haven't lost weight then. No, it's just really literally. Fat. No, 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 just a little bit. Like, but I'm doing the keto. Lot. Yeah, I'm about to start doing that. Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm about to because I, I lost like two and a half kilograms when I was in India. Yeah. Um, and I'm about to do the keto diet. Two and a half, how many pounds is that? I don't know. Well, in a kilogram, it's 2.2 pounds, so it's about six pounds. Oh, I've lost six pounds. We lost the yeah, same. Six and a half pounds. There pounds you go. More. This, this, this room is 12 pounds lighter. Yeah. 
There you Twelve go. Lighter. In the last, I started about two weeks ago. Okay. Two. So what are you doing the keto diet? Yeah. Amazing. Cool. You have to, I, I don't know, and I know I'm going to do it because I've been speaking to. It's a, just basically no carbs. Yeah, yeah. So I've been, I've been chips, speaking pasta, to rice, bread, fruit. Um, yeah, fruit. You can. Yeah, fruit. Yeah. I've been speaking to. Um, I've, I've got a, a contact in Bahrain, and he's uh, been advising me upon it. He's, he's, he's a personal trainer, health and fitness guru. And do you know Marie? Oh yeah. She's doing it as well. Ah, uh, cool, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome so, stuff. Yeah. Awesome stuff. So well, I don't know why we're talking about diets. I don't know. How, do we, I? Get, how do we go? Oh yeah, kitchen. Yeah, so you could share the kitchen because you eat out. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, potentially. I'm, a, I'm kind of similar, especially yeah. if I was living on my own. Because yeah. you kind of, when you cook as a family for four people, the less of you, like if, if Anna and the kids are away, I never cook. Yeah, yeah. Just, because it's like, it's just, can't just the, the hassle person. for one person. Yeah. So I probably would, be, I probably could cope with the kitchen. It's the bathroom. Bathroom. En suite room. If it was a very nice en suite room in the city centre, I could be tempted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Not that, that tempted, but I, yeah. I could be tempted. Um, so, and, then, and then people like, you know, you'd want the, a high-end one. Yeah. I, I, if I was ever going to a HMO, you wouldn't see me looking at the cheap ones. I'd be looking at the... I'd, and you'd pay I'd more? Pay, pay, I'd happily pay more. I'd pay double just yeah. for high-end, good quality, good finished... Even things like the windows, like I'm just sitting looking at the windows behind you. They're all like wooden frame, single glaze. They're a bit shit. Um, things like that would put me off. Like, honestly, there's little things like that would really put me off. So like, go high end. You want to get maximum rents and, and you want you want good tenants that are prepared to stay. Especially if you're in an area. High like, end. Like central London, for example. Mm. You've got a lot of high end people, high end jobs. It makes sense. It depends on where you're. Birmingham, similar. Yeah. Right past Birmingham, you could do that. It depends yeah. on the area a little bit. Hull. Yeah. Hmm. Bit dubious, <laughs> but, um, but even then, my my ten my properties are very high end in Hull. They're done to a very very good standard. Mm. Very good furniture, really good good decoration, really good um, condition in the property. Well looked after, no messing around. If something goes wrong, fix it. Don't mess around. If something goes wrong in the property, fix it. Mm. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be that. Um, so like for instance one of my properties had a little bit of a leak from the roof and the, the internal wall where the, the, the water is an extension it, it leaked past the lead so we had to get that fixed but the, 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 a bit of water came inside the built the, the room um, the, the utility room and it made a little bit of a dampy smell and a bit of uh, paint peeling off uh, no messing around I got one, one a tenant made me aware of it took a photograph showed me I had somebody in there within a day fixing it, getting mm. it fixed, getting it sorted, because I don't want my tenants to have to live in that condition. Yeah, yeah that's um, true. It's true. High and end, and, so, that keep, and that that helps you keep tenants as well. Sure. So if we're going to sum it up, then remember that your house is your product. Yep. Samuel um, teaches his book is called Buy Low, Rent High. Yep. And so another thing, just to bear in mind as an extra point, is that the the, the price of the house. There's no direct correlation mm-hmm. to, to the rent. It, it does change. Yeah. Of so it when does. you buy. Look at the rental market and buy with the rental market in mind. Yeah. So buy low, rent high. Yeah. Make sure that your house is your product and you do it to, to a high standard if you want good rents. Yeah, absolutely. And thirdly, go <clears throat> for super rents. Yeah. I.e. HMOs and service accommodation as opposed to single lets. I think that kind of and, sums it up. Yeah, and the last thing to get maximum rents and keep good tenants. Back to last week's show. Good HMO manager. You must have a good HMO manager. It's so so important. Or let an agent, um, or, whatever or it agent, is. let an agent service accommodation manager, whatever, yeah. you, whatever you whatever you use. Good it. management. You need good management. And we um, talked about that on last week's show about yes. HMO manager. Yeah. Brilliant. Awesome. I think that kind of sums it up. I right. do as well. It's now time for this. On this week's news article, we have come across an article which is uh, describing a a European town where you can buy a house for just 80 pence. Mamma mia. Mamma mia, exactly. Okay, a small Italian town in Sicily (laughs) is selling homes for one euro, equivalent to 80p, in a bid to entice more people to move to the area. It's one of the many locations in Italy which is struggling with dwindling populations. Uh, The town of Bivonia... Located in the south of Italy, has a population of just 3,800 residents, which is half it was half of what it was 40 years ago. Um, so yeah, for 80p house, now that's as close to no money down as you can get. No, you do have to pay the bonds, okay, which is 2,100. So you can get a house for 2,180p. <laughs> it's just like I'm, I'm sort of thinking like, why don't we just go there and buy the whole town? But look, think about it. Like, you could turn it into like a holiday destination. Ho- I was going to say, holiday destination, service accommodations, 2,800, 2,000, like £3,000 for a, an apartment in the beautiful island of Sicily, um, rent out £100 a week or whatever. 
that's, 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 that's talking talking about good good ROI. Or just keep uh, it as a whole. And it also says for yourself, look. you don't have to live in it. It can be turned into anything, such as a restaurant, shop, or hotel. Um, so literally, there's no holes barred. You can do whatever you want in there. Um, it, it's going to be it, well. Who knows? Let's let's go out and have a look. Um, but yeah, it'd be great if you could if you could get one of these apartments, whatever, turn what? it into service why accommodation. Are they, why are they so unwanted? People are leaving. Um, probably there's not much income there. There's probably not much jobs there. So people are just moving and going to bigger cities, bigger towns in Italy. So uh, the population's halved in the last four years. That's just mental. Um, and as a result, we've got all these empty properties. I mean, this place is all over. But the thing over. is, if you like, for example, bought a load of them and turned them into stuff that people did want to. Yeah, that's crazy. I'm surprised some some sort of a savvy business person has not done that. Um, now, obviously, there's, you need to do your due diligence and make sure, but uh, well, it'd be, it'd not be much, interesting. Not it? much, because it's only a couple it's of grand. Two grand. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like, but is it like them houses in Liverpool? Where you, remember, you could buy a house in Liverpool for a pound, and there's still there's still places in Liverpool where you can buy for a pound, but you have to take on the refurbishment work. And some of these houses are essentially are knocked down back to brick but you've got to live in them that that was the rule with the liverpool ones you have to actually live in them so you buy them to live in then you have to keep them for a period of time before you can sell them so it stops savvy property investors going along and buying all these houses for a quid um doing the refurb and then selling them for the uplift value um so but some of these properties there was a program on tv the street um i can't remember what it was called but um i think it was called the street where you can buy a house for a pound or something like that, and that was in liverpool um, and there was so many of them, and there still is to this day. So uh, it's crazy, crazy, isn't it? Absolutely so. crazy. We, we, we're, we're missing a trick somewhere with this. We're definitely missing a trick. Somewhere. I would rather buy a house for a million, wouldn't you? Like in London. <laughs> well, we'd like to live in London. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's now time for this. Okay, on the questions this week. Now, if you guys are not aware, you, we always do a, a Facebook Live before filming. Um, if you want to ask questions, just drop them in the comments. Uh, you can leave us messages on YouTube, um, send us an email with questions, or just send me or Russell a, a message on Facebook and, and or, that's or on LinkedIn. the uh, Property Investors with Samuel Leeds Facebook group. Yeah, Property Investors with Samuel Leeds Facebook group. Now, a couple of questions we've got today. Um, okay, so first one's from Dave William. What would you say is the best way of dealing with estate agents when it comes to rent to rent SA? Is it best to say that you will do a company let on the property so they can grasp that concept? Good, good question. Uh, well, it's a, it is a corporate let. Yeah. It is a corporate let agreement that, that you want um, to do. So, yeah. All I'd say is if you're going to an agent, be very upfront and transparent with them. Don't try and pull the wool over their eyes. Um, be open and honest upfront from the start. Tell them exactly what you plan to do with it. Uh, don't, don't say things like... There's a video, um, there's a video Samuel put up of me um, on, on YouTube. Stage. Um, speaking to... Yeah. Uh, I think it was an agent. I've done it with agents. It was, yeah. It was was it an agent? Yeah. Um, so basically what you want to do is you want to ring them up, ask them questions about it, build a bit of rapport. Mm -hmm. And then you want to say something along the lines of, it sounds absolutely perfect. Um, it's not actually going to be myself that's living in it. I'm looking to do it on a corporate let agreement. And then for an agent, if it was like a high street agent, I would just say, is that something that the landlord will be open to? Yeah. Is that something that, you know, and, and then they'll normally ask for details and you can explain how it works. But yeah. It's a corporate let style agreement you want to do. Most high street agents will have heard of that. However, it's a lot easier to get it with not a high street agent it's of a lot course, easier to direct get a deal, to vendor direct to vendor or with a little a you know so gumtree places like that it's much easier yeah because, even if it's an agent because an agent that puts it on gumtree yeah we not. we um we cover a lot of that well, we cover all of this at rent to rent revolution um that we part of the academy training it's a fulfillment event we run uh rent to rent revolution where we actually get you in touch with agents get you in touch with uh, direct vendors and you you book viewings and you go out and we tell you what to say we give you the scripts uh, we tell you exactly how to go about securing them um one of our success students callum he came 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 there in august he's now got three or four rent rents all of them through agents i believe apart from one was a with direct vendor actually three of them are through agents and he's now making like six thousand pound a month pat like from the the rent yeah. rent so well, rent rent is an amazing strategy so, so that's great that kind of answers your question dave okay next question gary silverback mcgrath okay is there a limit to how much bmv a deal can be What's the best amount of percentage rise that either of you have managed to get? Um, no, there's no limit. Like at the end of the day, you want the house as cheap as possible, so you want it as below market value as possible. So um, the best. I, is, uh, we just bought one 
during the um, when we said it's now time for this snake cut, we just bought one in Sicily for eighty p. Yeah, so um, you know that, <laughs> that's a good that's a BMV. Pretty, pretty BMV. Um, the, the best one I've done for an investor was one uh, property that had a, a done up value and it, it's actually been refinanced at one hundred and four thousand um, pounds. We bought it for I can't remember. It was mid forties, forty five, forty six thousand. Um, yeah, 45. so that was considered that was like 50, 60 percent BNB, um, but it was a complete wreck. The, it was back to brick. They, they'd started doing the refurb, so there was it was there was bare brick. Right, yeah, most I, suppose of it's it's I suppose you never buy it below market value in a way. No, because if, if that's the price that they agreed to buy it for, no one else. Then yeah. that kind of is the market value, which is um, the problem that they had with the remortgages. They were saying, well, if you bought it for eighty, yeah, you know, then the market value it says it's eighty. It's eighty. Yeah. Um, but there's ways to get around that. Well, the main way is to obviously to refurb it. So you buy some of this in a state. Refurb it's it, like, yeah, yeah, it was 80. But then I've done this and this and this and this. And mm. now it's obvious, obviously. Another way to do it is buy it in cash so they don't know how much you paid for it because you don't have to tell them. So <laughs> It goes on eventually though, doesn't it? It goes on eventually, but the refinance has happened by then. Um, when the surveyor comes out how to view it. How long does it take to go on land registry? Two, three months. If, and obviously if there's no mortgage in place, the mortgage lender would have to tell them, but there's no mortgage, you buy it cash. So... Uh, it's all about just being creative and being and, and only only answering the questions that get asked. If they ask you how much you bought for it, then don't lie to them, but don't freely, willingly give them that information. Don't just say, "Hey, I bought this for thirty thousand." How much pounds. did you buy it for? A million. A million. <laughs> yeah, but they don't know, do they? Because they're not. You don't have to prove it. Um, it's very true. So. Right. Okay. Another question that I get, and I got I, this coming via an email. Um, I get a lot of people asking me this question. I thought we'd cover it. Um, I can't remember who it was from, but it was to do with how do you go about securing lease option agreements through estate agents? It's a question I get asked a lot, so I'm going to answer it now. So sorry, Mike, you're, you're, not, you're not boring me at all. I'm just, I don't know why, something I'm really tired. Okay, but sorry, if anyone right. watching this that thinks Alistair is just boring the pants off Russell, th th right now, this second, that actually is not the case. Okay, right. Um, a lot of questions I get yep. um, with regards to lease options. How you do you, can't how do you secure you through an agent? You don't. I don't know one agent or one person that successfully secured a lease option agreement through an agent. Now, there might well be people out there that have done it. Um, but it's just, you've got to, firstly, you've got to explain to the agent the whole concept. Then you've got to rely on them transferring that to the vendor the way you've transferred yeah. it to them. It ain't going to happen. It's not, it just ain't going to happen. Unless you've got like a mate who's an agent or something. Yeah. Right? Unless you've got a guy that you need them to... That'd be, understand that, it. that'd be a great like double team is it one of you becomes an agent yeah the other one, the other one um, so if you had like a like a, why don't you become an agent yeah become an estate agent and then yeah. you've got your end on the end so that's a good tip become an estate agent if you want to do it um, go, and work, <laughs> go and work in an agency for three three months um, and get Samuel to meet a load of vendors but my, my point being if you just go to a conventional agent um, unless they really understand what you're doing and they really grasp it they you, you're going to struggle and I would say 99 times out of hundred you'll never do it mm. um because you've got to relay the, the the strategy and the methodology to the agent and then you've got to rely on them getting it to to the vendor um it just ain't gonna happen unlikely ain't, very very unlikely. unlikely it's gonna be hard um, if you know anyone that's gonna let me know uh, we'll interview them love to um, well, that'd be good actually yeah if, you do, yeah if you have ever done it yeah we would very happily have you on the show and you can tell us how, how it's done you be can correct. help us well guys, thank you very much for tuning in. We'll be back next Saturday at 7 p.m. Do not forget to um, like if you're watching on YouTube and share with all your friends. Tell everyone how amazing Alistair's hairline is. See you next week. See you guys.